Today I decided to do an entire driveline flush on my 2014 Range Rover Revoke. Now this is a dynamic series, so it has a 9-speed ZF transmission and a GKN Gen 5 coupling, which is also known as an active driveline, and also a rear differential got flushed. Now I'm unfortunately recording this after I already did the transmission and the rear differential, but I can show you what's involved in that and then get into the uh, unique fluid change on the coupling. All right, so underneath the car, you can see the bottom of the transmission. This is after the uh, belly pan here has been removed. You know, we could do for an oil change. Right here on the transmission, you'll see uh, that's the drain plug. You use a little hex key to pull that out. And over here on the side, on the driver's side, uh, this is an American version, so driver's side, you can see the fill plug right there. So what I did is drain this out while it was warm, so about uh, 110, 120 degrees. And I captured it and measured it just so I know that how much fluid is coming out and going in. And I used uh, Amsoil's automatic transmission fluid. It's a synthetic. Um, yeah, it was pretty dirty when it came out. Uh, they did, I did that three separate times from a flush to a fill. So I drove around a little bit to get the fluid up to temperature and measured it with one of my scan tools that I have. And uh, then you just pull this plug and drain it out. Now, originally I pulled about two and a half quarts and then I was able to get about the same amount back in and I just went around the subframe member with a pump hose a bottle pump that I got at Harbor Freight and pumped it right into there until the fluid started coming out then I let it set a little bit drove it around for a while came back and I did that routine three times and after the third time of flushing it um, it was pretty much that kind of pinkish red fluid and I believed I was good to go so like I said, I just got done with the differential and I'm going to move on to the coupling, but I'll show you the fluid and you can see it's pretty, uh, it's pretty worn out. It was kind of a little murky. So it was great to get that out of there. That's about 24 ounces that I pulled out of there and I replaced it with a synthetic gear oil from Amsoil as well. I'm going to show what it takes to get that done. While doing all these fluid flushes and fills, you're going to want your vehicle level, but I also want it elevated so I can get underneath it. So I have the ramps up front. And I jacked up in the rear and put jack stands uh, so that the car is level. And that way when you're filling the transmission, you can see that fill plug. And just when it comes out of there, you know you're done. Same thing in the rear with the uh, coupling and the differential. So let's go take a look. So we're looking at the rear differential. This is coming from the driver's side. And right here in the bottom is a 13 millimeter hex. That's actually a plug with a magnet in it. So you pop that out and that's where all your fluids going to drain out to. Now, just to make sure I knew what was coming out, I measured that as well, you know, so I know what's going in. And right up here is the fill plug. So once you clean out your plug on the bottom, you can reinstall it once all the fluid's jumped out. And then uh, start filling from the top until it starts flowing out of the hole. Again, I used a separate pump bottle to get the fluid in there until it ran out. So this is the coupling that I'm talking about. This is the... GKN Gen 5, I believe. And uh, from what you can see here, there's a very small plug right here. That's going to be the drain. And if you read the side of the housing right there, it says oil in. So on the back side, there's another little plug you got to pull, and we'll be able to get in there and pump it in. It's going to be hard to get the phone up there, but uh, you can kind of see it in the background, I believe. So in order to get uh, most of the fluid out, um, you hit that little plug there, and I'm also going to pull the pump because there is no filter on this unit from what I've read. There's just a little screen filter on the end of the pump, so we'll take that apart and see what it looks like. All right, I got all the fluid out of the coupling unit. It's kind of a brake fluid consistency and kind of green. A little dirty, as you can see. Not horrible. Uh, but I also am going to repair a separate issue that I have. Uh, this right here is the pump I'll be taking out in a second. But that giant plug and wiring harness on, on this vehicle reach all the way over here behind this exhaust and that heat shield. And the plug behind that heat shield is kind of dry rotted and some of the wiring is exposed and corroded. And that's causing me a electrical fault in the pump unit. So. I bought a separate cable. I'm going to seal that up and put that in. I'll show you that in a second. 
All right, so now that heat shield removed, I can show you the plug right there that got a little heat affected. And you can see my, my attempt there, that brown stuff is a vinyl sealant. I actually used uh, conformal coating and that vinyl sealant to protect the wires while I got the new wire harness. So I'm going to yank that whole thing out, which involves um, little tiny, you can see right there in front of my finger, it's a little tiny screw that's a grounding wire, and then three plugs while I'm doing the whole fluid swap. Okay, I got the pump head unit out. I first had to pull that plug, which has a little yellow gate tab that's got to slide up, and then the plug separates and pulls out. It's really tight. And as you can see here, this is the pump head. So there's those two bolts and the plug. And that's the pump head. And inside there's the pump. I'll take out those three eight millimeter hexes and we'll take a look at the other side of the pump. Okay, I got those three bolts removed. Now I'm gonna slide this right out. Be sure to take the wire off the top. That little inverted Christmas tree thing really grabs into that hole up there. This looks like it's O-ring, so it should pull straight out. Okay, I got the whole pump unit out. I just figured I'd take a close-up shot of a couple of these things. This is kind of the motor, the motor head, if you will, or drive unit. It's got a little bit of wear in that geometry, but nothing I'm concerned about. The outside is obviously a little dirty just because of where it's located. Uh, pump looks okay. I don't see any grime or anything that's got a little screen filter. When I pulled this out, the screen filter here just kind of popped off of this black housing it snaps together so not really concerned just gotta make sure you pull it out of there and this entire thing can slide out from here straight out if you need to clean it out but in general this looks spotless so a little bit of cleaning especially in this hole where the motor goes in there there's a little dirt and junk in there you can see the drive down there looks good all right pump units back in and torqued down i used a little loctite on that's threads of the screws as well uh, the motor head is back in cleaned off its o-ring sealed so it fights you a little bit as you push it in just make sure you have that drive aligned it's almost like a oval shaped slot and I did replace the wiring harness which was very difficult because of the way it's uh, wire tied I guess you could say to the to the differential housing uh, but I did get it and on the opposite side um, I'm throwing a little bit of liquid electrical tape on the lower connector and as you can see I did that up on top and did a little wire wrap with it so I'll finish putting another coat on that and tighten that all up. All right now I'm going to fill the unit with uh, the Halidex fluid or the uh, viscous cupping fluid I got. I'm using Ravenol which is an all-wheel drive Halidex fluid. Uh, this is the fill plug. You can access it right on the back side of that wiring. I'll see if I can get my phone up there. And you can see it's not easy to get to, but it's in the background there. That's your fill hole. I was able to fit this gear oil pump that I got from Harbor Freight up and behind that uh, pump head and into the fill hole. And I'm going to turn on the system and make sure it primes and check level later. All right, so that's about a two to three hour job, not a bad way to spend the afternoon. And uh, here I am a couple months later. Love the way the car drives and handles. Seems to shift a lot better. Uh, it was definitely worth the time and investment into dumping out the old fluids. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps.